Hey all, welcome to the show and a bit of a different light review we're going to have today. A review that's actually going to involve a screwdriver. And we're also going to learn a little bit about the color rendering index and UL certification while we're at it. Because those are both labels you're going to see on LED grow light boxes regularly. So, a lot of you guys are enjoying my current grow journal that I'm running. Those have been some of my best performing videos lately. And many of you are commenting that you love the lighting type, meaning a passively cooled, silent LED light that's in the small HID replacement range. It is a lot easier for me to film audio around it, I'll tell you that much. But some of you are also saying, Lex, it's a cool fixture, but I'm just not going to spend $400 plus on a light. Can't, it's too much. If it were closer to $250, then maybe. Well, this episode is for you guys, because take a look at this. This is a Year LD Pro 170 watt. It's also a passively cooled fanless LED light with that all too familiar spectrum that we'll cover in a moment, but it's a budget light. Year LD is a newly formed Chinese manufacturer and this costs under 275, shipping included, and looks like that fully built. I'll link to these in the description and also I'll try to get you guys a further discount code down there as well if I can. But this right here is how the Pro 170 arrived in my mailbox. One of its cost-saving measures is to weigh as little as it can, considering that there's still got to be a heat sink, and to save space by coming in a need-to-assemble state. That's a bit different, right? Well, for those of you who tune in regularly, you know that for every light design out there, there is an inexpensive, low-cost version where you trade off a few of the luxuries, like coming pre-built, in exchange for saving a few bucks. This baby right here is a 170 watt actual power draw model, as the name suggests, and it's trying to emulate, according to the company, a 400 watt HPS bulb. Though I feel it more accurately imitates about a 350 watt HPS based on its coverage, which is 3x3 vegetative and 2x2 flowering area. Still, on the flip side, 170 watts isn't a lot of power either. And it does come with the basics when you pull it out of the box. Uh, this is actually just to put it together. It has a power cord, it has some hangers, and it has a rope hanger. Actually, one of the nicer ones. I like these uh, thicker road hangers. These are the good ones. These are the ones you actually want to get, so it's cool that they have that. And now it needs to be assembled. So, whoop. So let's see if I, a not terribly handy person, can actually put this thing together. So here we go. Okay, wow, that wasn't so bad. That was actually a uh, very easy assembly. I even had a bunch of the screws left over. Let's take a look at a few of the specs, shall we? Uh, starting with the driver right here. This unit uses a Meanwell driver, a dimmable one, except this is the kind of dimming where you have to do it with a screwdriver. Meanwhile is a very popular, good quality driver brand I've seen on lots of models before. It's made in Taiwan. As the fanless design here suggests, uh, this is going to be lower intensity than some lights, so you gotta hang it fairly close, but uh, higher power efficiency with this unit clocking in at 2.5 micromoles per joule. Again, that's very good in 2020. The highest I've ever reviewed was 2.7 micromoles per joule, and that was just a straight up board style light, which you gotta hang really close, like even closer than you gotta hang this light. Now let's talk about the precise spectrum. 
3000K and 5000K diodes enhanced with 660 nanometer deep red, which you guys can see they're all a little bit different right here. From what I can gather, the 3 and 5000K diodes here are the well-known and previously covered 3M301B Samsung diodes. There's 192 of the former, the 3000K, and 60 of the latter, the 5000K. While the 48 deep red ones are by a Chinese company called Goran, so those red diodes are probably another spot where the manufacturer saves a bit of money in order to keep the cost low. Now this light is UL certified, and they even have it uh, right here on this bracket, right there, UL. Now it's UL8800 certified, which means that it's designed for commercial grow rooms where there's a lot of exposure to both workers and constant humidity. UL is a certification standard run by a company that provides all sorts of certifications and crazy varied manufacturing industries from fire alarm makers to battery and building wire producers. When you see their certification on a grow light, it means that the fixture meets certain parameters for ingress protection, how well it keeps water and dirt out, certain photobiological standards that are concerned with eye stress from being exposed to the lights for long periods, certain environmental standards, and certain wiring and connection standards that are fit for the gardening environment. So there you go, now you know what UL certification means. Now let's talk about the shade of light that this thing puts out. Let's turn it on for a second. Okay, here we go. Now it's on and uh, looks like a daylight or some shade of white type of color. We've seen this mix before, so today instead I wanted to talk about the color rendering index of it, or CRI, because uh, I want to kind of describe this light more precisely to you guys. Hopefully you guys are getting a good idea of what the shade is like. So, a color rendering index is a quantitative measure, with 100 being a perfect score, of the ability of a light source to reveal the colors of various objects faithfully in comparison with natural light, or a natural type of light source. In other words, are your plants going to look like they do in the outdoors, or are they going to look blurple under the light? The CRI on this light is 90.2, which is high, and that's roughly the CRI on any of the lights that we've looked at before that utilize this 3000, 5000, 660 nanometer spectrum. You're going to see a lot of that CRI thing uh, on boxes, on LED grow lights, especially going forward. Now let's turn it back off a sec, because I'm probably blinding you guys a little. There, so there you go. So if you're willing to forego the convenience of uh, a dimmer that's just easily adjustable by hand, and you're willing to forego some of the fancier accessories, do a little bit of assembly, you too can have a passive cooled LED light with a decent spectrum in it, and it won't cost you a lot at all. That's the show for the day, hope you guys have a good one. And we'll see you all next time. Subscribe and hit that like button to make sure you don't miss the next episode.